Some called this ad the nail in the coffin for the Romney campaign, and one fact-checking website even called it the lie of the year. Take a listen. Obama took GM and Chrysler into bankruptcy and sold Chrysler to Italians who are going to build Jeeps in China. Mitt Romney will fight for every American job. Okay, so that was a Mitt Romney ad saying that they were going to build Jeeps in China. And it was labeled a lie. But now it seems the joke is on them. Chrysler just announced that 100,000 Jeeps will actually be made in China starting next year. Just like Mitt Romney said. And joining us right now to weigh in on this is the founder and president of Less Government, Seton Motley. Good morning to you, Seton. Morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing okay. I, I remember this. Remember uh, Mitt Romney from the great state of Michigan. He knows a lot about the car companies. And so then when he said, you know, Chrysler's going to wind, they're going to wind up making Jeeps in China, the left wing media just exploded, didn't they? Yeah, they did. It was the lie of the year for the Washington Post. Uh, and then, of course, it turned out to be, you know, factually accurate. I'm, I'm reminded of Dan Rather on the papers. It, the, the, the documents were false but accurate. Um, <laughs> th this was exactly what, it, uh, if you'll recall, uh, Paul Ryan in his vice presidential speech and in other places uh, ex uh, pointed out that Barack Obama gave a speech at a Janesville, Wisconsin GM plant and That's said, right. we're going to keep this open for 100 years with the auto bailout. And then they closed it and started making those cars in China. Um, I'd like to also point out that China, oh, and by the way, and the media fact checkers found that to be a, a lie, too. They sided with Obama on that, too. And, and Romney Ryan was correct on that as well. Sure. I'd like to point out that 55 percent of, uh, of the GM has increased production in China by 55 percent since the bailout. And they make seven out of 10 cars outside the United States. So it's a good thing we did this uh, $83 billion auto bailout for, for American jobs. Sure. So, but, you know, a, a big part of the president's base are, you know, auto union workers. And so if yes. they hear, hey, they're going to ship a bunch of uh, car manufacturing jobs out to China, they think, oh, well, wait a minute, I, I don't like that idea. So, so you've got this fact-checking organization came in and said that, that's the lie of the year. Why would a fact-checking organization say something like that? You, you would think that they would uh, be non-political, but in fact, sometimes they are a little political. Well, they have they? fact in the name, so that makes it right, right? <laughs> no, um, I, I think the fact-checking movement is the latest in the, in the unbiased journalist movement, which prior to 1965 didn't really exist. You, if you remember the olden days, they had two papers in a town, one for one party and one for another. Sure. And we, we created unbiased journalism to say, Let's pretend to be unbiased when we're actually promoting leftism. I think the, the, the fact checkers is another advancement of that cause. And at the end of the day, they're just leftists as they always have been. Uh, let's take a look at a quotation from uh, the CEO, the head guy there at uh, Chrysler. They say, quote, as part of our global expansion of the Jeep brand, there are some cars that can never be made in the United States and exported. We will keep the pillar cars of Jeep in the United States. Wrangler is one Jeep. Uh, Grand Cherokee is another. If you can tell me I cannot make a if you tell me I cannot make a Patriot somewhere else, I might as well go out of the market. And that's from Sergio Marchione, who heads up uh, Fiat and Chrysler. Uh, well, he's just well, he's just being a businessman. Well, well I, look, I understand that. And of course, if we looked at the tax and regulatory burdens placed on companies here, it, it's kind of pathetic that it's cheaper to make it in China and ship it back here than it is to make it here. But that's and that's not the company's fault. That's the government's fault. But you see Toyota expanding in Mississippi. You right. see, I think I think Volkswagen's in Tennessee. You see a bunch of car companies building. What do those states have in common? Oh, yes, their right to work. <laughs> so the, the problem here isn't isn't so much. Uh, it's, it's partly the tax and regulatory burden of government. It's also the unbelievably punitive costs of unions in states like Michigan, which has now gone right to work. We'll see how that affects the auto industry. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, $26.5 billion of the auto bailout was a direct check written to the United Auto Workers Union, which, of course, the, the Democrats then saw a lot of in 2012 in the election cycle. Indeed. All right. Uh, Seton Motley uh, joining us live to talk about how Mitt Romney was right. Ironically, Oops. we find that out today on the day the president's sworn in for a second term. All right, Seton, thank you very much. Thank you.